So let me write the title and I will start from there. I think I want to call it this way. Um, power dissipation in battery dash register circuit. This is um, something that I could call simplest possible circuit in the sense that if I wanted to build some circuit that does something, so it's not a trivially simple circuit, but something that it does is reasonably simple, then I would build a circuit that looks something like this. I would need a battery to provide a voltage difference, have something interesting happening, and I need to connect that battery to a what I call load, and elsewhere you hear me give a better description of load. Here, what our load will be is a register. So this comes at a place where we just talked about Ohm's law. So if we have some voltage that's provided by the battery, it's the voltage difference between these two points. So if I call this point voltage equal to zero, then the voltage at this point would be V0. So in Ohm's law, what you have learned is that if you have some voltage that's uh, imposed across uh, an ohmic element or a register, something that you can, a circuit element that you can characterize with something called resistance, then this arrangement will result in a steady state that involves a current I. So, and this resistance is defined as the amount of voltage difference. Now, here the voltage difference that we care about is this difference here. The voltage difference from one end of the register to the other end of the register. So, the resistance is defined as that voltage difference that you see divided by the current. Uh, that is this current, the same current that is going through the register. So this is Ohm's law. Now, with this Ohm's law in hand, we can do, um, we can walk through some considerations to think about um, um, how much power is dissipated in this circuit. Now, I think I need to motivate why we are talking about power. It goes back to our introduction of electric potential, like a week or two ago. Our introduction of electric, in, in our introduction of electric potential, we said a lot of things. We said things like, oh, difference in voltage, it comes from this, E dot DL. In fact, that was our definition of voltage. But we also introduced the other relationships, like um, uh, the relationship between change in electric potential energy and the difference in voltage uh, to get uh, to get a, a relationship between change in electric potential energy and voltage all you really need is a test charge a test charge multiplied to voltage difference would give you a change in the potential energy of that test charge that is what i want to focus on this uh, fundamental definition isn't quite as meaningful right now so let me get rid of that so as we look at this, how uh, change in potential energy relate to, to, relates to change of voltage times the test charge, we want to relate um, this test charge to some other circuit element and, or um, some other circuit parameter. And as you look at this circuit, what you see is, oh, uh, yeah, I mean, it must relate somehow to the current. And as you relate it to the current, you remember the definition of current, that we define current as number of charges that cross a checkpoint divided by some duration of time. The current is the rate at which, say, some amount of charges cross this checkpoint here. You count how many charges flow through that in how much time, take that uh, ratio or uh, quotient, then that'll give you the current. So to relate from current to some amount of charge, um, some small, well, some amount of charge, what you to do is, okay, um, I can take the amount of current and multiply by duration of time. 
multiply by duration of time, then I would end up with the number of charges that crossed that checkpoint. Or um, I can put it this way. I'm going to abuse the notation a little bit. I'll say delta Q, meaning the amount of charges that cross that point in some time delta T. Um, that's going to be equal to the current times the amount of time delta T. So, you know, in this battery register circuit, if you are looking at what is the uh, change in potential energy or some kind of a change in energy, we can say, oh, I have this expression for amount of charge. Let me put this in for the charge here. Then we get this. Um, the current times delta T. And um, you stare at this expression long enough and you realize you can take the change in energy divided by change of time. Or to get that, you divide everything by delta T. That'll get you change in potential energy divided by change in time. That's equal to current times some change of voltage. And this portion here, this is what we associate with the power. Power in physics is defined as rate of energy change. Uh, sometimes you can relate that energy change to work being done. Sometimes you can relate to, to other things. In the end, it comes down to it's the rate of energy change. This is a rate of energy change. Rate at which how much did the energy of the potential energy of the battery change. And that is equal to current coming out of the battery times the voltage of the battery. Quite simple relationship, and it doesn't actually involve anything new that you need to know. Uh, it comes from everything that you already knew. Uh, it's the kind of things I love uh, because physics is fundamental science. Now, um, so I think last time or in the other lecture, that's where I ended it. And I want you to add a little bit more to that. So this is the question that we can pose. Um, given this fundamental circuit relationship for power, for a circuit, you can say this, amount of power dissipated or put in, depending on the direction, is equal to current times difference in voltage. How would the amount of power dissipated in this circuit, uh, let me clean this up a little. So the question you could ask is, okay, so you have some circuit that's uh, expanding some amount of power given by current times the voltage of the battery. Um, how would this power change as you... Um, so I guess this is how I want. I want to ask the question that sometimes leads people into making a mistake. <laughs> So um, this is how you could uh, ask this question. Um, how does this power depend on as a function of this resistance? Uh, um, uh, let me do it this way. So uh, power is a current times a voltage. And um, let's say in, in this particular problem, you know what your battery voltage is. That's quite common setup. You are given the battery voltage. And, and let's say you are given the resistance. That's also quite common. And then someone asks you, given the voltage and the resistance, uh, what is the power as a function of that voltage and resistance? And as you are trying to answer that question, you look at this relationship here and think, okay, um, I know voltage. I this is somehow related to the current, but that's not useful. I want to get rid of this current. And you look at, oh, I have current here. I can solve this for current. My current is equal to delta V or V naught. Uh, let me write it as V naught. It's going to be V naught divided by R. So I can plug that in here. And you get this relationship. The power dissipated in this circuit is equal to uh, V naught over R, V naught times V naught, so V naught squared over R. Now, after you have worked this out, let's say someone asks you this uh, general question. In general, 
do large registers dissipate more power or less power? And if someone ever asks you that question, it's a, frankly a trick question because the answer to that question ought to be, it depends. Now, you might be wondering, when you look at this expression, it doesn't look like it depends. I have power as a function of resistance. Resistance goes on the denominator. It looks like if I have a larger and larger resistance, then I should be dissipating less and less power. Is that not always true? <laughs> that's, the, that's the money question whenever you're dealing with uh, uh, math or often physics scenarios. Because uh, often we are looking for a statement that's uh, generally true in the sense that true always with uh, no exceptions whatsoever. And the proposed statement, larger registers dissipate less power which is the statement you might come to believe looking at this expression. It's not generally true. It's true in this circumstance. I can change enough of the setting to make it so that, um, so that it's not true. I can give you a counterexample. And um, so let me show you the counterexample. So in order to make the counterexample work, I'll have to change up this circuit a little bit. Let me change up this circuit this way. I'm going to introduce something that um, we call a full, um, uh, we call current source. So a battery is a typical example of what we call a, a voltage source. The job of a battery is providing a fixed voltage difference between its ends. That's what it does. Now we can replace this with a current source. Um, let me just spell it out. And current source is kind of what it sounds like. Its job, instead of providing a, a instead of a fi providing a fixed voltage difference between the two ends, its job is to provide a fixed amount of current uh, through the circuit, regardless of what happens. So a current source would work in such a way that if I just connected this with a wire, it would still send this amount of current. Um, if I somehow connect to, uh, make this resistance very, very large, it would uh, um, still try to provide the same current. And now you can see that as it's trying to provide this same current, what Ohm's law will mean is that there ought to be this voltage difference between two end points of the register. So that this voltage difference is equal to the current that the current source is providing times R. So let's uh, imagine in this scenario, how does my power dissipation depend on the parameters I control? I control the amount of current from current source and I control the resistance. Um, how does my power depend as a function of my current from current source and my resistance in the registers I pick? I look at that expression again, current times voltage, and in this case, current is I0, the current that I set at the source, and the voltage is my unknown quantity this time. And I look back at this expression where I look at, oh yeah, that's the voltage difference between the endpoints of the register. And because they are all connected by wire, it's the same voltage difference at the end, two ends of the current source. So I use this expression in place of V. When I do that, this is what you see. I naught times I naught, I naught squared times R. So as you look at this, ask and answer this question. Do you dissipate more or less power with the larger registers? And if you try to answer based on what you had before, um, you're going to answer wrong. Here, resistance is just on the numerator. It's not on the denominator. So larger resistance does mean larger power. So 
in this setting, we would say larger registers display more power. So, which is it? <laughs> Does a larger register mean more power or less power? And the and, and the answer in which I'm not tri trying to trick anybody is it depends. Um, so how the amount of power displayed it depends with how resistance changes. The simple answer there is it depends. If uh, what someone told you, the only thing that they told you is that they are changing the resistance value. I'm taking this register, I'm making it larger, or I'm making it smaller. With that description alone, you haven't been given enough information. You need to be able to uh, look at additional parts of the setup to figure out more things. And um, as you are thinking through those different setups, you will often have three different expressions that you can consider that will be helpful. So this is the three different expressions for power. So power dissipated in a circuit, you could describe as a current times a voltage. That's kind of where we start from because that we can get that easily from definitions. Now, using Ohm's law, it kind of depends on which of these two variables you choose to eliminate. If you choose to eliminate current, then you will get this, V squared over R. That's how power depends on resistance. If you choose to eliminate voltage, then you will get this expression, I squared R. That is how power depends on resistance. And the difference between these two expressions is, so they are both true. They are uh, neither of, they are both true at the same time. It's not as though one is true sometimes and the other true sometimes, that's not it. It's a question of when one is more useful than the other. So if you have a situation where voltage is specified, then this is more useful for really two reasons. You are directly putting in the quantity that's specified. And also, um, if your voltage is fixed, then as you change your resistance, you can just consider only where the resistance is in your mathematical expression. If you have a different setup where the current is fixed, then this is the more useful expression uh, because you can put in your fixed current and you only need to look at the how the resistance changes to get the change in the total power. But now, even in those circumstances, um, uh, this expression still continues to be true. So consider the second example I gave you. If I were to use a V squared over R, this is still valid expression. It's not any less valid. The only thing you have to be careful with is as your resistance changes, your voltage will change also. So you can see from this expression, this V squared thing, it goes as I squared R squared. So, uh, so, so as you increase the resistance, you are increasing your voltage also. So even though your denominator increases, your numerator increases so much faster that overall more power is dissipated. And you can do it the other way around too. Imagine we are back to where we had the battery. So you just have a battery here and um, and you are being asked the same question. As the resistance changes, how does the power change? And you know, using this expression is, um, is the thing to do. That's the thing that will eliminate the chances for mistake as much as possible. But you can still use this expression. This expression is not any less valid. The only thing you have to worry about is um, it to express it in terms of current and resistance. And you have to remember that this current is a function of voltage. So the current looking at, yeah, looking at this, it's gonna be, um, v not, so the current squared will be voltage squared divided by R squared. So here you have the situation where as resistance increases, the current decreases so much due to this R squared factor on the denominator that this combination combined product overall decreases.
because despite the increasing resistance, your current will decrease so much. So, so, so yeah, when someone's trying to ask you, how does your power um, change as you change the register, uh, just watch out. Because uh, in the most general terms, the answer is it depends. And for the specific situation that you might be given, um, you have to carefully think it through. Uh, until you develop some level of intuition, it might even be good to just uh, um, <laughs> numerical calculation and get it that way. Um, otherwise, I would uh, just uh, uh, keep this uh, in mind. Uh, remember that there are one, two, three different expressions for power, and which one is useful depends on the situation. And I think if you think through that, then it might help you avoid this a trap that this is a trick question is trying to set you.